let me pay my obeisance to the two greatest mental health professionals in the country one is patanjali another is gautam buddha patanjali is not a philosopher alone but he is a scientist he gave us yoga researched today across the world and has been found to be useful to entire mankind and uh, and you all know that gautam buddha gave us vipassana mindfulness as the world talks about it and again both have taught us to align the body with the cosmos to align the mind with the body and to align the cosmos with each other in philosophical terms but philosophy is equal to science when you discover the equation philosophy becomes science when you are not able to look at the cause and effect it remains philosophy so after paying obeisance to these uh, two great philosophers we are talking about suicide prevention and with an impact of covid also so let us look at uh, difference between pandemic and other disasters which is very important for us to understand scientifically there are six differences when i was working at latur 93 94 after an earthquake i found that people always believed that whatever happened was because of the act of god hand of god i remember a, a footballer saying that diego maradona when he hit the goal by his hand and uh, and the referees did not watch it that was how uh, brazil moved ahead in the world cup years ago hand of god and and in latur sabhi mujhe kehte the ki ye bhagwan ka karamat hai itna bhi tha He, that happened that earthquake happened on the last day of ganesh festival and they told me that it is basically because god was against them so every disaster whether it was cyclone earthquake floods people talked about fatalism as a cause but this is the first pandemic where people talked about science they said that this disaster was caused by a virus and because science supervene the people who actually run temples mosques churches gurudwaras were told by people of science to close them that's the first important difference the second important difference is that every disaster as as probably sometimes a pre impact phase but the impact phase and the post impact phase is is always there there's early post impact phase and late post impact phase and and when i say post late post impact phase i mean initially the early post impact phase just after the disaster and then the late post impact phase in earthquake the impact phase is for a few seconds in floods it could be a few days in uh, in 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 a cyclone it could be few hours but this post impact phase is going on for a long time more than 24 months now and uh, with o micron coming up again again a new new mutation so this this pandemic is important because the impact phase is too long the next most important difference is numbers of deaths are huge more than 4 lakhs in india millions across the world So that is also one of the most important differences. The fourth important difference: isolation. You cannot go and meet your close relative at the hospital. You cannot help them with their uh, food, their toilet, and you cannot give a kiss on the cheek to help them recover. You cannot talk to them at all uh, live. You might talk to them on Zoom or whatever, but that does not make much of a difference. The next most important difference is the invisibility of the virus. The virus is not invisible; you are attacked by an invisible virus, an invisible RNA, which is so important for us to understand. And then those who black marketed the masks, oxygen, Remdesivir, and so many others—I call them COVID terrorists. So, because of the long impact phase, huge numbers 
isolation, invisibility of the virus, and the COVID terrorists, the mental health impact of this disaster is going to be huge. Though nobody's interested, neither the central government nor the state governments. This is one phenomenon which we need to really understand. Very important. And that I call this as the apathy, empathy, antipathy triad. They coexist. In the past pandemics also, if you have read the book by Chinmay Tumbe, you'll find that in the past pandemic, thousands died. And, and immediately after the death, you would auction, they would auction the articles of the person. There was no time for empathy at all. When the deaths are too many, empathy goes down. Because each one of us enters into a mode of self-preservation. That is something we need to understand. So the mind shuts down and you're not able to empathize with the family who has lost a father or a mother in your neighborhood. Mind shuts down to protect itself and then that I call as apathy. So empathy may be around, but apathy is also seen in a pandemic when there are many, many deaths. Antipathy, the, the phenomenon of self-preservation extends to self-preservation of your family. So you don't allow your, your parents to go out and meet their close members of the family who have recovered from COVID and whom they need for financial assistance and for emotional assistance. And that is antipathy. It's like a son telling his father, you can't go and meet your sister. After, after recovery, though she needs you emotionally and she needs you financially, and that is antipathy. Antipathy is also seen in the COVID, COVID disaster where, where one family member abuses, abuses the other and, and, and accuses him or her for bringing COVID home and killing the parents. I still remember this man accusing his sister who was admitted in a COVID center on the phone because his parents, their parents died. And he believed that because his sister was working in the emergency section, she probably brought COVID to everybody. So, so this is something which coexists in, in a pandemic and it's very important to understand. Keep this poster in your, in, your, in, your, in your colleges. Very important for all your students, for them to understand that locked minds are time bombs, diffuse it early, lest it explodes inside you. Which means if you block your stories and your feelings, your mind will explode. Mental illness, distress, psychological symptoms, will become true. So it's so important for us to understand that locked minds are time bombs and diffuse it early, lest it explodes very soon. Before I ask you a question so that you can answer and, and participate, let me give you a few facts. NCRB is the agency which documents suicides across the country. There's a 10% increase in suicides in 2020, 10% increase from 16.1 cities from from 22 from 22390 to 23855 so there's a 10 percent increase across across one year in 2020 and that's a very big increase one more thing i would like to share just look at this pie diagram very carefully family problems and other illnesses are responsible for more than half of the suicides in the country. What does that say? It says that Indian families are in great distress. It could be relationship, it could be financial, it could be space, small space. It could be, it could be complications inside the family. It could be issues between parents and children, issues between husband and wife, job issues, financial issues are all hidden here. Half of those who die by suicide in the country die because of family problems and other illnesses. And that is something very important for us to understand. Again, a very important point here. One out of four people who end their lives by suicide are daily wage laborers. And one out of seven people who die are housewives. More housewives die than single women. More married men die than single men. We were always taught when we were doing a psychiatry that single women are more at risk for suicide, but now things are changing. The stress of being married is much more stronger and more powerful than the stress of being alone. 
on a lighter note you can always say that if you are single you can get down from both sides of the bed and if you're married you have to get down from one side of the bed so poor are more affected by suicide remember one out of four people who end their life by suicide are daily wage laborers and in this era of globalization you find the rich becoming richer and the poor becoming poorer and a large section of the poor in india have become invisible no newspapers write about it there are no morchas no slogans at all invisible completely invisible i went to buy tomatoes yesterday and he said 12 rupees i was surprised 12 rupees kilo would be fantastic and he said 12 rupees for 100 grams so globalization and the rapid change hides the poor sends them into a dungeon and all the all the liberal economy helps only some it does not help everybody and that is something we need to really look at in suicide education status is very important approximately approximately if you add if, you, if somebody can add on the screen uh, just add those from no education to higher secondary and tell me by, by unmuting can anybody add that please Praveen will unmute that person so that he can he or she can say the percentage of those who end their life by suicide from no education to higher secondary. Twelve and six, sir. No, from no education up to higher secondary. Okay. And okay. everything, yeah. Any maths teachers from no education to higher secondary? Sir, I think it's nearly 90%. Absolutely. So 89 points, sir. 89 points. 89 points. Absolutely, ma'am. I, I would like you to, uh, I, would, I would be very happy to, to know your names. I'm Elvira. Okay. Clinical from psychology. Place? From which place? Goa. St. Xavier's College, Goa. Ah, Goa. Okay, okay. Very nice. And, and, the, and the gentleman? I'm Sujay Pal. I'm from West Bengal. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so uh, less education, highly correlating to suicide. So what do we see now? We see the poor, less educated, daily wage laborers, family problems to correlate to high, high numbers of suicide. And that I think is very important. This is the last slide and this is very important to know your states and I would like to show here that Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Manipur and Nagaland and Jammu Kashmir have the lowest incidence of suicide. Very low, very much lesser than the national average and that is very, very interesting. And Indira, your state is higher than the national average. National average is 11.3, your state is in around close to 20 and my friend from West Bengal, uh, you are close to the average, uh, you are 13.4 as average is 11.9. Allow me to explain what is this 11.9 .11 suicides in a population of 1 lakh. This is controlled for, for population increase in population. So let me start by the first question of the day and anybody can answer my friend let me ask you all the first question. If somebody comes to you in your class and says that, 